Across the universe, creation waits for the prophets to speak their words of expectation and their vision of renewal. May we gather around them today once more and let their longing grip us and lead us into birth and blessing. So come now, my friends, this is the meeting place of promise and prophecy. Let us listen through the ancient words that we might be ready to hear a baby's cry. Join together in singing our opening hymn, People Look East. pilgrimage, grant us the courage to hope, hope for your presence, hope for your peace, hope for your promise. Amen. Let's sing together. Church. I'm Susan Hefner Kuhn, pastor of the Vine, and it is good to start this journey of Advent to Christmas with each and every one of you. So, welcome to this time of worship. I give thanks for the hands that helped get our space ready this morning to get our Christmas tree up, to get our altar back in its rightful place. So, I thank those hands that helped make that happen and for the voices and hands who are helping with worship today for Sam, Charles, Tripp, Laura, and Donna. Thank you for being here in worship. Just a few announcements. Uh, we have one more sandwich collection day in December. It's December 10th. That's our final collection of sandwiches that we are going to share to Roof Above. 
So if you're able to make some sandwiches of meat, cheese, and bread and bring those to the church on that Thursday between 10 and 1030, we will happily get those delivered to persons who are in need of a meal. We are um, continuing to think about and um, support children in Shamrock Gardens Elementary as well as in the city of Charlotte with a gift of books, pajamas, and a gift card. So if you still want to participate in that, um, I know that the slots for Shamrock Gardens are filled up, but we still need more sets of pajamas, books, and gift cards. So feel free to just pick an age um, for pajamas, a size for pajamas, match it with a book and a $10 Walmart gift card. And they don't have to be wrapped. You can just bring them up here, either in a grocery bag or a Ziploc bag, and we will take those and deliver to Shamrock Gardens as well as children who are gonna be staying in shelters during Christmas and the winter months. We also are gonna be collecting blankets for Roof Above to help keep warm the hundreds of men, women, and children who are gonna be staying in the shelters these winter months. They are asking for the blankets to all be the same type. So we have shared with you where you can find those, where you can get those. You can either have them shipped to the church, you can bring them to the church um, up until Christmas Eve, and we will share that gift of warmth to persons in need. Again, welcome to this Advent season, the season where we anticipate light shining in the darkness. Welcome to worship. of prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, this first Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of hope. And we do indeed desire and we hope for so many things. For peace, for health, for some sense of stability, for security, we hope there will be opportunity for us to gather together again as a church with family members and loved ones. We hope that we can um, get uh, experience this season, which is in darkness, 
but we hope that we can see the light that is shining and is never overcome by the darkness. We are your people, O God, and we are people on a journey, on a journey to experience life, birth, renewal. And the journey can feel long, so grant us patience, give us courage and strength to walk on those days when we don't think we can go another step. Surround us with community, with the body of Christ, so that we know we do not journey alone. And fill us with hope and light, so that we can shine and be beacons for this world. For the prayers that are in our hearts this morning, the prayers of this congregation, the prayers of our family and communities, we lift them up to you. And in the spirit of thanks and faithfulness and blessedness, we offer you our praise. And we collectively pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words that come from the Gospel of Mark, the 13th chapter. This is often known as the little apocalypse because it is this, uh, these words of looking forward into the future that Mark writes about. Mark 13, verse 32. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware. Keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake.
as I was thinking about Advent, I start thinking about Advent back in the summer, I was wondering uh, what Advent was going to be like this year, and I kind of assumed we would be where we are right now, that we wouldn't be able to gather in this sanctuary. And it's such a shame, isn't it? Because this sanctuary, it is so beautiful. It is beautiful all the time, but there's something magical at Advent when this Christmas tree is put up and the purple pyramids. And now I wish we had a zoom in camera uh, so you can see the beautiful altar that is here. But I figured we would be at home. And so I began to think a little bit about the power, actually, of being at home during Advent. And that had me begin to think about and um, read and study a little bit about where exactly was Jesus born. And I think for some, this might be a surprise, and I hope you will find the gospel, the good news um, of where Jesus was born as we all are at home this season. So hear these words from the Gospel of Luke, which is my favorite gospel to read the Christmas story. Chapter 2, verses 6 and 7. While they were there, they being Mary and Joseph, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, I don't necessarily want to burst your bubble, but we do need to get some clarity about just where exactly Jesus was born. And as beautiful as the artwork and the pictures are of this small barn way up on a hill, far away from the city, it just isn't accurate. And it isn't scriptural. I'm not exactly sure why we want Jesus to be born way far away, removed from everyone, because there is nothing in scripture or theology to suggest God wanting to be so removed from us. The very story of Jesus being born, God coming in flesh, incarnation, is because God so deeply desires to dwell with us that God would choose to come in flesh. What the scripture does tell us is that while they were there, she gave birth And she lays Jesus in a manger, a food trough, because there is no room for them in the inn. But the word for inn in Greek is not a motel. We don't have any reference that Mary and Joseph are going knocking on doors to all these different motels and hotels in Bethlehem only to be turned away. In fact, Bethlehem is a small village, and no one really passed through Bethlehem, so there probably weren't even any inns. The Greek word for inn is kataluma, which means guest room. That same word is used when Jesus and the disciples go looking for a space to have their last supper. They find an inn or guest room. And room should really be translated as space. Individual rooms were not really a thing. So the better translation would be there was no space in the guest room. And of course there isn't space in the guest room. Everyone has been told to go to your home of birth for the census. So more than likely, Joseph and Mary are at a relative's home, and there are other relatives who are there. And there are relatives in the guest room, and it would be rude to kick them out. And so Mary and Joseph are somewhere in the residence, but not in the guest room. 
And more than likely, they would have been in a family room or the living room, as we like to call it. It was very common also for animals to come inside at nighttime for safety to stay in that family room. So a feeding trough, a manger, would have been there. It would have been a common object. It would have been like the dresser drawer that I've heard grandparents, great-grandparents speak about. When babies are born, they're put in a dresser drawer. A typical Judean house of that day consisted of an area near the door, often a dirt floor, where the animals would come and be right there. So they wouldn't be stolen, they wouldn't be preyed upon, and that their body heat could help warm the home on cool nights. The family would live and sleep in a raised part of the same room set back from the door. And usually the guest room was either upstairs on a second floor or an adjoining family common room. Family were all together and they took care of one another. Hospitality was an essential aspect of life and faith. Mary and Joseph would not have been turned away from their family. The family would have been there to support them, to care for them, to help them bring forth life. The family room would have been a great space for Mary and Joseph to be because it allowed them to be supported and nurtured while bringing life into the world. Hear that closely. The family room allowed Mary and Joseph to be supported and nurtured while bringing life into the world. In my house, our family room is in the center. It's where we like to play games, Uno and Scrabble and Pictionary. It's where we like to gather around the fireplace to read or watch a movie. There's something cozy about the family room. It's where we can be who we are. We don't have to put on any pretense. We can wear whatever we want. We can sip coffee and hot chocolate. We can look out the windows and watch the sunrise or notice the sun setting. The family room is where anybody who comes into our house comes. All are welcome. So this Advent, here we are at home. We're not going out. We aren't traveling. We're at home with each other or close to a phone where we can talk to our loved ones. Just like Mary and Joseph. They are in a home to give birth. And they're not alone. They are surrounded by family who will make sure they have something to eat or share an extra blanket so they can keep warm, stay up with them and chat to help pass time. They're there to encourage and swap stories and tell jokes and remember the good old days. We like to call the family room the living room. I like that term, living room. It makes the space seem so active, like something is always happening. And in the time of Jesus, there weren't separate rooms, really. If you were in a home, you were in everybody's space. Not like today, when we can go to our bedroom or go to another part of the house and shut the door and hide out. There's no hiding in a Bethlehem home. And that's really what Advent should be like for us. We should be creating space within us that is alive, active. Advent is about creating a living room in our hearts so Jesus can be birthed in, be brought into a place where light can shine. Does Jesus have a space within you? A space where you can be exactly who you are and Jesus can be exactly who Jesus is. Is it comfortable? Is it cozy? 
Does it offer a place for conversation, freedom to laugh, a warm fire? Is it alive? Is it supported by family and friends who are there to encourage you and to support you spiritually, emotionally, and physically? Offer you food or something warm to drink? Is someone there to wipe your brow and tell you to keep going? See, that is the power of Christian community. We are called to create a living room for one another so that Christ can be born in an environment of nurture and grace. Being in Christian community is not an option when you join the church and when you sign up to be a follower of Jesus. It is the very essence of what it means to be Christian. Our identity is wrapped up with one another. Without community, our faith and our spirits stop growing, and it stops birthing and shining light. See, when we tell the story of Jesus being born far away in this little barn, away on a hill, it makes Jesus seem distant. And then we begin to relate to Jesus distantly or forget him altogether. But when Jesus is born in the home of our heart, smack dab in the middle of our space, right at the doorway where you're going to trip on him, coming and going, we can't ignore that. We can't just step over Jesus and pretend he isn't there. The whole reason for Jesus was so that God could dwell in us, with us, be a part of our lives. Not an aside, but an active, living part in our daily life. Jesus is there to engage in and with us. Do you know of someone who's in need of a living room? Or do you? Do you need that space in your heart? Are you wanting the gift of hospitality so that light can be birthed? For me, the power of the Christmas story, year after year, is that Jesus continues to be born every year, every day, every moment, born right in the heart of who we are, in a living room, a place of hospitality and nurture and support and encouragement. Jesus doesn't need a stable far away because Jesus wants to be close to you. And even though we are distanced from one another physically this Advent season, we as a Christian community, we can still be a living room, a place of nurture for one another. And we need that more than ever. For Christ to be born, it will take all of us coming together in a spirit of prayer and hospitality to offer a space. Because Christ desires to be born again and again and again in our community, in our church, in our homes. Will the vine, will you, will I, Will we be a living room, a place for Christ to be born? Let us close together in singing Away in a Manger.
bringing us the light, may we let Christ in, into a living room, a space where he can flourish, where he can change our hearts, and where he can lead us into places of peace and hope. Go in God's grace and God's peace. Amen and amen.